Congratulations on your fine choice in podcast programming, ladies and germs. We are Things I Found Online. And joining us today is comedian, author, and grateful new heart recipient, Jamie L. Croft. What's it like to be told the only way you can live is that someone else dies? Jamie's here to talk about that and so much more. I am Joe Cipriano. Last I checked, gracefully tossing to my co-host, Louise Palenker. Louise. Thank you, Joe. That was elegant. Elegant. Very professional. Our guest is comedian, author, Jamie Elcroft. What other titles do you enjoy? Uh, Comedian, author, writer. Father, son, husband. Father, uh, son, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I've met a lot of your relatives. Because you were holding court at Cedar sinai for years. (laughs) For years. Not for years. For 85 days. It it was so easy to make plans with Jamie. He was always in the same place. (laughs) And you know something? People uh, People found me uh, that have, I never thought they would find me. And all of a sudden, somebody would show up at the door who I hadn't seen in, in maybe 12 years. One of them was 32 years wow that was the record that's amazing 32 years there's a lot of corridors because you have to the directions are confusing <laughs> very, he, he couldn't I mean, find as hard you. as possible he couldn't to find, find me i was at the room at the end of the maze all right so tell your story why were you holed up at cedar sinai mm-hmm. okay um well i didn't know it but um in the old days uh people didn't talk about health as much as they do now about your bodies and and what kind of fitness a family might have or what kind of congenital problems they might have. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, wouldn't you know it, color me surprised, my my grandfather and my uncle both had bad hearts and uh, had what they call the widow maker, where you just drop. And um, I had a widow maker in 2005 on an airplane 20,000 feet. What he means is a oh, heart attack. Oh, it's a heart attack. Good a, God. Heart you attack would think that has got to be the worst. And the worst. It was Twilight Zone, Joe. It oh, really my was. God. Imagine if you will. <laughs> You're trapped on a flight to Seattle. <laughs> and it was crazy. No, it that's, was, that's, that, was really, that is so scary. I, 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 really I mean, it's did. bad enough already. And then to be uh, yeah. 20,000 feet in and the air. And then laying on a galley. And the pilot. That that that, <laughs> that that rubber mat in the galley, oh, you yeah, know, that's soaked with coffee, stale coffee, and all that stuff. Anyway, um, so I got through that, and they put a pacemaker in a stent. Did they have to emergency landing? Uh, yeah, and emergency yeah. landing in Portland. Uh, Everybody was thrilled, of course, yeah, on the yeah, plane. Yeah, <laughs> going in the sorry, sorry, a crowd like, favorite. Sorry, I'm dying. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I am dying. <laughs> I felt like John Cleese on the way down. Sorry, 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 bad sorry, luck. Bad luck. Bad luck. <laughs> sorry. My fault. My fault. Really, quite sorry. And <laughs> Can I just ask you something? But yes, what does it what does it feel like? Oh, it it feels like somebody parked a Hummer on your chest. Really? Wow. And I, Chris Christie is driving it. That's that's how he's not a good driver. Intense it is. No, it's the most. You you can't expand. Yeah. You can't do. Yeah. It's just this pain, and you just. And I just had, I was with my three kids on the plane. My wife was on another flight. Oh, my gosh. And so Alaska Airlines took really good care of the kids. And then uh, Providence in Portland took really good care. But the only reason we landed in Portland, I'll make this as quick as possible because I'm taking, I feel like I'm monopolizing the mic here. It's all about you. Um, (laughs) It is all about me. It should be. Well, I'll keep talking then. Um, The, the, the crazy thing was, is uh, I was laying on the galley floor and I could hear the flight attendant talking to the pilot. And, uh, uh, well, first she asked if there was any uh, doctors on board and a paramedic appeared. Wow. There were no doctors, but the paramedic said, oh, oh boy, yeah. I know I've seen this before. Yeah, that's just as good. I know what this guy's going through. So um, so she's on the phone. She's like, <laughs> and he's like, well, we can uh, be in uh, San Francisco in about uh, 45 minutes. And, uh, wow. and the paramedic said, this guy's not going to make it 45 oh, minutes. Oh, God. Which was heartening to you me. You heard that. Uh, you know, Were there yeah. any Did peanuts I, down yeah. there? <laughs> was there anything? <laughs> Something to choke on. Wow. And, and, God, uh, that's scary. And I just yelled out, Portland. Wow. Because wow. we had just taken off from Seattle. Yeah. And, and I... So the pilots heard me and said, ah, we could be in uh, Portland in about 10 minutes. Wow. You and with so the geography, mid heart attack. Saved my, ass, my GPS ability saved me <laughs> once again. Listen, I have such a terrible sense of direction. If I get in an elevator and I come out, I have to look 
Oh, well, I always other. have that problem. Yeah. Sometimes I, I look towards right. the curtains and the windows. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I knew that was yeah. the end of the building, yeah. but I still right. Okay, anyway, that was that. So that's where it started, and that was two thousand. Then that was two thousand five, yeah. and they slapped in a pacemaker, and I mean, I, and I got the good one. I got you know. Uh, on star um in the uh, because i don't know where the hell i am half the time and i lock myself out of my bathrobe all you know got three to four times a week and uh, so that came in handy i got uh, climate control and xm serious radio on wow this, on the pace that is the high so end. it held me it held me it also makes step. toast for 12 wow. years and that smells good <laughs> Yeah, well, it only takes bagels. It has yeah. a really uh, it's not yeah. uh, thin toast doesn't work well. With <laughs> anyway, point being, uh, that lasted for about twelve years, and then my heart took a nosedive precipitously down to seven percent. I was living on twenty percent of my heart. I saw Louise. I went. I saw Ron. I was hanging out in Santa Barbara with him. Yeah. Oh my God! I just gave away where you live. I'm sorry. And oh, the fans are going to wait. Be do all you live over. in Santa Barbara? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. I didn't know that. But we used when, to walk. Know? We when would walk Henry like on the beach. With oh, Sarah and Jamie yes. came up, and yes. yeah. that was we so would wonderful. periodically because it's. It, you, they found it was easier to get to Santa Barbara than to go to Santa Monica. Right here, absolutely. It was right, just, they would good. just head up the it road. It was faster. Henry, I, Henry loves. Santa can we get an address? So so well, can, we lived like in Westlake Village at the time, oh, okay. so it was a. We're being Californians easy. now. Yeah. Sorry about this. Uh, flyover states, um, <laughs> but anyway, um, then I my I called my doctor and I said, "What what can I take?" For this, I, I'm, I'm I'm laying down. I'm running out of breath. I have to sleep sitting up in a chair. What can I take? And and he said, take a drive to my office immediately. Mm. And when I did, he said, go down to Cedars, check in to emergency, and tell him you're you have congestive heart failure. And then they'll take it from there. Jeez. So he called ahead, and I went down there, and they put me right in the transplant ward. Bingo. Wow. And I was there 85 days. 85 days. But which isn't long to wait. I really only waited. I was really on the list for only about a month. But wow! The, the interesting thing about it is, like, the way oh. that they handle it psychologically is like every time. I'm I'm sure that he found this refreshing. But every time I would ask, so how long do you think, or usually, <laughs> or on average, or right. you know, yeah. Yeah. Like, how long if we wait? take <laughs> all the stats and kind of like, can you give me like a mean or a median, yeah. like? Are, they would they would just keep saying the same thing, which was it could be in an hour and it could be never. They they just didn't I, have an answer. I met a woman last Saturday at a donor meeting who's been waiting for kidneys for six years. Oh goodness. Man. And a kidney can be come from a living donor. Because mm -hmm. a kidney right. can regenerate just like a liver. Yeah. And and the thing that, that really got me is when I started researching it, I started you know, I'm I'm laying in the hospital, so I started writing a book. Mm. It didn't start off as a book. It started off as posts called the Tin Man Diaries. On Facebook. Mm -hmm. nice. So I posted on Facebook mm -hmm. and it would be every few days or so and just kind of catch people up with it. And what I didn't realize after about a month of this is uh, it, it, I was taking people on a journey yeah, with me. Absolutely. And I got so many thanks for that. People said, Jamie, this is so cool. You're taking us on this journey with you. I, and honestly, uh, Joe and Weezy, I didn't know whether I could keep up the pace. I didn't know mm. whether I'd be able to follow through. And, yeah. and when we got down to uh, the last couple of days, I made a couple of little notes because they said, well, we think we might, you know, we, you know, and it was a, a motorcycle accident in Northern California. And, I, and you get about four hours notice because that's what they have to go up and get it. But the actual surgical team yeah. flies up to the donor hospital and checks out the organs to make sure they're compatible. Wow. And then puts them in a cooler and flies them back. And they are responsible for those organs from the, the moment they uh, re, uh, retrieve them mm -hmm. and, and uh, to, to the moment they, they plant them in There's the There's no chain of custody. They, they have it the, the whole way. Yeah, right. <laughs> they do. Right. It's a foster heart and liver until it gets to you. <laughs> yeah. But the doctor did say when he put my heart in, it, he said, last stitch. He said, I pulled that thing up and... And I thought I jiggled your heart, but it just, it just started, started going. beating. Wow. wow. It started beating. And he said, sometimes we have to use the paddles. Uh -huh. He said, but your heart was really happy to be there. Wow. So that was kind of nice. And then I saw Vice. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> a heart transplant scene in Vice where they have Cheney just... It's yes. just a head yeah. and part of a neck <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a hips and legs. And in the middle, there's this big asshole. <laughs> but he I would... didn't mean to say big asshole. I 
I, oh, I he said that. He would reject that any heart. Large though. hole. Large. He would find the the Asshole. you know the presence of a heart to be <laughs> just disconcerting with the rest of him. Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's true. It was like I. And you're all heart, so your your new heart was like, yay, my I love agent, it here. My, my agent was funny. I called him and I said, Jeff, I, wait a minute, I, does your agent have a heart? I need a, a new heart. Boom. Yeah, that, <laughs> okay. that's exactly yeah. what he said. He said, James, you called the wrong place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want to? I step on that. Yeah. All right, wow. so let, let's Google Jamie Alcroft. Okay, let's. Mm. Let's see what the internet has to say about well, Jamie. Is that what we're going to do? Oh, we're yeah. going to Google you. Oh, look, there you are. Yes, and one of the interesting oh facts gosh. about Jamie Alcroft is that he is the husband of famous ice skating choreographer Sarah. Kawahara. Kawahara. Oh, yes. And, and, then, and everyone in his family has Japanese names, except for Jamie. Well, they all have middle Japanese names. Yeah. Interesting. And, uh, I have a very English middle name. And hmm. Jamie's daughter, and I'll let you talk about your... Well, you have two beautiful daughters, Elise. I do. My and, wonderful daughter, Elise, is uh, going to give me my first granddaughter in June. And we're so excited. Uh, That's cool. She is uh, down in Bolivia right now looking for a child. Yeah. And, uh, no <laughs> kidding. You have she, to shop early. Yeah, you got to get out there and make sure you get the right choice. No, yeah. it's I'm very very excited about that. My son Thatcher is on tour with Haley, and he handles all the VIP stuff for her. So when uh, the the fans pay an extra seventy five hundred dollars, whatever it is, to get a Q and A with Haley. So right. can you and, click on a picture of Haley? Yeah, let's. Or uh, Jamie with Haley Kyoko, or there she is. I don't know. And there she is. Oh, there's Haley. And Haley's in Rolling Stone magazine. Yes. yes. And, uh, oh, yeah. Month, and we brought a, she's a one show of, and She's tell. one of the women shaping the future this she's month. She's shaping the future right now. In Rolling Stone magazine. Yeah. Pick it up. She's busy shaping. At your local Rolling Stone store. <laughs> and yeah, page 60. Page 60. Page, page 60. 60. Go to Six page 60, please. Turn in your... And there she is. Textbooks, please. Yeah, to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you got a? Yeah, and, oh, that's, yeah. that's, and that's Haley. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad she's one of the women shaping the future. That's people say. Well, you must be so proud of your daughter because she's doing concerts and she's got an album out and she's with Atlantic Records and she's really making this rock thing happen that she's mm -hmm. always dreamed of making happen. And so I say, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, ha I'm proud, I guess, but I'm more happy that she's living her dream. Yeah. And and but then what hits me. When I get proud is when a cameraman will say, wow, we love working with your daughter. She's so great uh, to work mm. with. And when, you know, some grip or gaffer or somebody. Right. She's just a says, good person. That's mm -hmm. it. It's so You important. know, I was talking to yeah. Haley the other day. We had lunch together and we, you know, mm. blah, blah. And, and so she doesn't really have any air. She's very yeah. grounded because her whole life is about helping people, mm. particularly gay women yeah. or gay men. Um, <clears throat> she came out when she was about 14, I think, and ever... And, and she didn't know that she could use her music to change lives, but she has uh, the the song "Girls Like Girls Like Boys Do," which mm -hmm. is her big hit. Yeah, like a million yeah. ten views or something. No, a hundred and ten million. One hundred ten million. One hundred ten million. Yeah. And Haley yeah. directs her own Crazy. videos. Yeah, yeah. she's directs she's so video. multi talented. She has drawn uh, drawn she's... the attention of directors. Matter of fact, she's on a Facebook watch show called Five Points. If you go to Facebook and just type in five points, you mm. can watch this series, Facebook Watch. They're 10-minute episodes. Um, Kerry Washington produced the show, and they're they're quite good. And uh, she's on that. Uh, she's an actress on that. And, and uh, she is... Uh, she's got a lot of exciting things ahead of her. Man, that's yes. awesome. And I'm happy. And, I... and, then, and then my and she said, Thatcher, would you come on the road with me? Yeah. And he's been able to tour Europe with her. And uh, and just hang out with all the roadie and, you know, just kind of and direct I have, traffic. I have an early Haley memory of her as a baby. Yes, you do. Yeah. She's wearing a diaper, which she wore <laughs> quite, quite well. Yes, she did. And I'm leaving and another comedian, because we, we all used to hang out, another comedian's leaving and Jamie's holding Haley. And this was the cutest baby anyone has ever seen. <laughs> she was gorgeous. Yeah, she was gorgeous. <laughs> she was just uniquely adorable so he's holding the baby <laughs> yes. and the other comedian looks out the car window at jamie and says how do you ever leave home yeah <laughs> and that's just a snapshot memory in my sure. mind because yeah. it was like that's the perfect thing to say about ha right. having a child you know having a baby and you know just being in love with your baby and, yeah, and all my babies all of course babies. all your babies my absolutely gosh. and uh that uh, i think you were at premiere when sarah mm. went into labor I with was. Haley. I was. Yeah. With Haley. And I oh, didn't wow. know what to do. 
No, I don't, there was no yeah. paramedic. No, we tried. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and my wife's being a professional ice skater. Yeah, she delivered our first child in uh, two hours because she was on the ice with Dorothy Hamill when her water broke, and she said, "Oh, I think I got to go. I'll see you later, wow. Dorothy." And, <laughs> and she came home. She said, oh, you know. So anyway, I, I was actually in Arizona doing a movie when the first baby was born, so I didn't get to witness all the the excitement. My parents were there with her, but then. Uh, we went in with Haley, and hey, Sarah was ready to have Haley, and uh, I was standing there, you know, and just ready, just <laughs> at the go, and the nurse said, now, honey, you relax, you just go sit down, it's going to be 12, 13 hours before I ever see you again. She just go find a nice magazine that's and watch funny. TV and relax. I'm sure and it didn't said, go that way. I said, no, that's what she said. Yeah. And, no, and but... I turned to her and I said, you know, she delivered her first baby in two hours. Right. And she turned over and she said, Ethel, we got a shooter over here. <laughs> <laughs> we got a shooter. We got a shooter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the reviews are coming in for the Tin Man Diaries. Oh, and this is yes. from, this is from, uh, so if you go to Amazon.com, there it is. Uh-huh. This comes in are? from David Stolk. Oh, yeah. Is this your agent? Yeah, um, no, no, I just saw five that. out of five stars. The Yellow Road Less Traveled. Ooh, I like that title. Yeah, uh, it's a verified purchase. So, uh, <laughs> <That's good. laughs> so we know. So I know. Yeah, so. it's legit. Right. Jamie it is. Legit. is he actually a... read the book before he reviewed it. <laughs> yes, yes. That's wonderful. Jamie How is a unique. hell of a writer. He also has a Forrest Gump like connection to famous people, places, and things. What a road this Tin Man has taken. Wow. Let me write your screenplay. Yeah. Ooh. Nice offer. Have you contacted him? Wow. Yes, that's, oh, that's a nice offer, though. I'd like pretty... to do a screenplay. Out and now what, we're talking. Is that something you're thinking about with that? That would be awesome. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I want to do a one man show about it and, uh, yeah. you know, fire a warning shot through my brain. Uh, <laughs> I, want to, I want to do that. Bob, yeah. Bob Dubak's been trying to talk me out of it. So. But, All right. Well, and he's been pretty successful. We'll see how he how he does I think with that. Would be amazing. Now, Joe, you ha- are no stranger to having read, ha- having written an mm-hmm. autobiography. I, I've never read. An You've never read one other than your own. But you have yes, written. I've written a few. Yes. <laughs> and, and Joe, it, describe <laughs> the process. Yours is called Living on Air. Living on on Air: Adventures in Broadcasting. Right here. I've got to read this. Yes. Bro, oh, it's so good. So, oh, it's delicious. I don't know about that. Is it- it's available it's at Amazon. Delicious. But you know what's cool is there's an audiobook version of it as well. Is that uh, This is the proof copy, sorry. Uh, and uh, the one I read from when I go, you know, when we, we do yeah. events. Um, but the, the audiobook version, uh, I wanted it to be more like a radio play. So okay. the audio design of it is a lot of original music by Greg Chun and... Um, uh, so Maurice Tobias uh, directed it, who's a wonderful director, and um, AJ McKay did all the um, the audio design on it. So there's and then there's me and, Joe with me and Tony, Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's Tony uh, Bennett this, with Joe. Wait this a book, get it right. That's Tony, Tony Bennett, Bennett with, with Joe. Joe, and he wrote this book with Anne Cipriano. That's my lovely wife. Yes. Yes. Anne and I wrote it together. And I yeah. and and uh, they needed quotes from me. For this book, yes. but Joe or Ann did not call. <laughs> it was a staffer, staff member called and interviewed Somebody, me. A sta- oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> no, that wasn't. Well, it was I, a I background. Re- it was background yes. information on stories that I had forgotten. Right, right, and, right, and, right. Yeah, yeah. So and you came through. They with were a bunch thorough. Of good stuff. Yeah, they were thorough. Yeah. 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 So yeah, because Joe and I go way back in uh, Kiss FM and mm-hmm. I know, kind Joe, of like before I knew you. Legendary, because you're know. from my premiere. Life. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the reviews for Living on Air are in. Ah. And they are good. I really? bet. So this is from Mark A. Hicks. Uh, I'm not sure whether or Sounds not like he's- Sounds like a fake name. It's a verified purchase because oh, okay. that doesn't show up. But five out of five stars. Couldn't put it down. Wow. Uh, format Kindle. Oh, verified purchase. Here we go. Working in radio for over 40 years myself and now finding some success as a voice artist could be why I love this book so much. But even- if I were a civilian, I'm sure I would still enjoy it. If you're in radio, and especially if you ever worked in a large market, you'll love it too. I can't help but feel like I know Joe after reading this. He feels like my friend. Oh, Enjoy. Oh, that nice. I think you should give Mark a call. Mark, no. yeah. that's awesome. Mark Let's call. have lunch. He would Come like on. to be your friend. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great college civilian. That's what we call you, by the way, you know. <laughs> The voiceover people call everybody else civilians. 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 Yeah, you are. Yeah, yes, we, we are you just in don't know. You're not in the core. <laughs> oh, so gosh. now, I don't know if you guys know this, but this is something I learned this week from researching this show, is that there is a difference between 
mm-hmm. your memoirs and a biography, okay. and an autobiography. Yeah. Does anyone uh, want to hazard a guess as to well, what? I would what? guess. I would guess. Okay. okay. You want to guess? I, I'm guessing that a memoir is, well, an autobiography would be about your life, complete From birth story. to death. Yeah. Yeah, or memoir right. would, be, would be stories. When you set down the pen. A memoir is a story. And that's yeah. why it's called writing your memoirs. Because if you write more than one, mm-hmm. it, it might add up to like being a series a bio- of essays. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it, memoir sounds fancier. It does. And yours may it's be a French. memoir because it was really about... That's how this started. Right. It started with a series of essays. When I was working cruise ships with my uh, comedy partner, Mac, uh, the, 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 the worst time to be a comic is between shows because Mm. you have an eight o'clock show and you're off by eight 30 quarter to nine and you don't have another show till 11 or 10 30 or something. And what are you going to do in the meantime? Drink. Well, you drink or gamble. Cause you know, (laughs) when we were with Diana Ross, I'd watch some of her show. I loved watching her. I must've watched her 300 times, Mm -hmm. but I, I'd go up to my room and I had a a file and I made an outline of stories from my life. Mm just to remind myself of all these different stories. And I'd pick one to write, and I'd write one between shows. And I had probably 50, 60 essays. That's uh, And that's where I called a lot of stuff for what this book. What a great because, use of that time. Because, well, my life, you know, I was dying, but yeah. my life didn't flash in front of me. Mm. It was meandering. I had time to let it meander in front of me and to yeah. to really explore how I felt about it and 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 how it shaped me mm-hmm. and uh i don't think i necessarily self-analyzed how it shaped me in the book but i at least talked about it and and really publishing the book was just very cathartic because i just oh, wanted yeah. to i wanted to get it out get it out it's out there now okay Ooh. it is it's there i see it. it's right in front of you and it happened in but, such a natural way by doing that and also it, when you were in the hospital yeah. writing those facebook posts yeah. all, all of that and, and, and the encouragement I got from exactly, the readers. Exactly. This yeah. should be a book, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It, it was wonderful to read because after, when he went in to have his operation, he, he went off the grid. <laughs> yeah. I was, oh. And I got, yeah. I was getting really scared. And finally, <laughs> several people <laughs> reacted I, that way. Wow. I was talking to my husband about it and he's like, well, why don't you just well. text Sarah? She's probably just sitting with him. I'm like, I don't want to bother them. Oh, honey, but I texted sure. Sarah, she texted back immediately and she yeah. said, and it was the moment you had just woken up and said something, remind me of what it was. Konnichiwa, baby. <laughs> out, out of, you know, the <laughs> doors was, of death. He wakes up and says that. <laughs> I was, I, my, I, I write about my hallucinations in this book too. Ten Man Diaries has, uh, because I, you know, Such a good any, anybody who ever right. said that laughter's the best medicine has never had a morphine drip. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, man, the hallucinations on that morphine. Wow. Oh, there were nothing like college. It was just <laughs> so much better. And I was hallucinating when I woke up from the operation. I was in a coma for a couple of days or I was asleep for a couple of days. And, um, and, I remember waking up, the first thing I said was, am I alive? Because my three children and my wife were standing at the end of my bed when I woke up, that very moment. Mm. They happened to be there. And they said, yes. And I just went back into my dream and I was standing on a balcony looking out over a crowd of people that were having a pool party. (laughs) Did you start singing, don't cry for me? I raised my arms. Did I what? Don't, Don't cry, cry for, for me. me. Yeah, yeah. Just, no, I didn't no. do that. I just said, Konnichiwa, baby. <laughs> Konnichiwa, baby. And in my head, I was on this balcony yelling, Konnichiwa, baby. Konnichiwa, baby. But, but what does it mean? And but they, in reality. They, in reality, <laughs> they were taping me. <laughs> They taped me and waking you were actually up. Saying my that. son whipped out his camera and started <laughs> taping me. And I was saying, uh... Wow! In reality, that's what I was. But what yeah. is Konnichiwa, was baby? It. What does that mean? Is that a movie Konnichiwa, quote or something? Konnichiwa is hi. Yeah, you know, take care. Konnichiwa. Yeah. Konnichiwa. So it's Hello. just a greeting. Japanese. It's just yeah, a greeting. It's a greeting. Yeah. Okay. And and baby is. So we don't know where that came. Baby is. <laughs> Who knows? We don't. So we don't know where that came from. I have no idea. Is that <laughs> something you say to your family when you no, encounter them? No, no, no. I say okay. you know, kabish. 
Hey, you know, Capiche? Hey, 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 come back. Yeah, and my, like a normal and my kids will say, right, exactly. <laughs> and my kids always responded, Kabosh. <laughs> Kabosh, Dad. Kabosh. 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 And I told him, I, I'll, I'd also talk to him like this sometimes. I'd say, yeah, Stop your greeting. I'll give you a bung and a brew. <laughs> and my kids were the only kids in California that knew what a bung and a brew was. <laughs> I'd have stopped your greeting. <laughs> Stop your crying or I'll smack wow. you across the head, yeah. you know. Yeah, bung and a brew. That's because my granny and my grandfather talk like that. Did they really? Aye, I they love did. Scottish accents. Oh, okay. they did that. All right, so we have yeah. tips for writing a memoir, and tips. we're going to compare tips. them to okay. tips for writing an autobiography. Well, let's compare them to what you, we really did. Because Google just offers up all this stuff, right? Mm hmm. So 10 tips for writing a memoir, Joe, would you? Uh, number would you one please? for uh, tips for writing a memoir uh, focus. What differentiates a memoir from autobiography is that it deals with only a slice, a portion of, a, or maybe an event in your life rather than your whole life. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, number two, breaking the ice, write, really. Okay. Okay, just break the ice yeah, and write. That, yeah. Number three, collapse. What's I don't that? know. <laughs> I don't understand that. It's Google. I, I think okay. it's, you know, Google just sort of is collecting things and then spitting no, them no, out I, I with see numbers. What it is. I see four. what it is. It's collapsing oh. characters or events. Oh, okay. You, you edit. You, you, oh, you, collapse, you, like yeah. uh, pull it together, pull it together. Uh, minimize, uh, maybe. Throw it doesn't mean like, important. Yeah, I like do the that. Widowmaker, like on the floor. Like okay. I do that all the yeah, time. Yeah, so it. you should use fiction writing techniques rather than nonfiction Ooh. writing techniques. Which I, I did. I made up a lot of stuff. Yeah. And if you're going to write a memoir. It's supposed to be true. Didn't you make up stuff? Come on. No, I didn't. I tried really hard to to, to find all the stories oh, you from did. all okay. these people I met in radio okay. throughout the years and into voiceover. All right, did I you, just did you collapse? I collapsed. Yes. I wrote. I wrote. I it. took classes. If you drink enough, you will collapse. You will collapse. You showing Pass and out. telling. That's fun. Huh? Okay. Okay. What is you showing and telling? I don't know. Maybe it's. We should have looked into this further. Do they mean like specific stories? You, you showing? Should, oh, 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 there's wow, more there. Look what Lane has for us. There's Go ahead. further info. Show I can't please see elaborate. Can you oh, see that? In all memoir writer gets the best of both worlds. In all other genres, the yeah. motto is show, don't tell. But a memoir writer gets the best of both worlds. Yes. Ah. It is True. expected of you to tell in addition to showing. This exposition helps move the story along or fill in gaps for relevant but not as important information. Okay. Don't all tell right. to show. the exclusion of showing. Yes. Show. Use both techniques. I still don't know what they mean. Show. That means this. Oh, I see. Well, there you go. Savannah so White. To yeah. yeah. Well, with that affiliation, I doubt I'm getting a Swan Gans. Mm. <laughs> so and now I show it to you. All right. Do you <laughs> e have you each brought selected readings to? Oh. Uh, yes. Yeah, Joe Cheat. Joe Cheat. He has his. <laughs> I, with, I think with now paper clips. Oh, number eight was. He uses those paper, paper clips. I have paper clips. Oh, so, what a cop out! So no, I well, use number this. eight was details. Oh, I'm sorry. Number so, yeah, eight is uh, details. details. And then we're going to do tips for writing an autobiography okay. to see the difference. And then you guys will read selected. selected. I think we ought to. Uh, oh, so there it is. There's not All more right. information. So Jamie, on do you want to do these? Yeah, go ahead, Jamie. What is this? Tips for writing an autobiography. Okay. Tips for writing an autobiography. <laughs> we'll see how many are the same. By Jamie your L. Biography can be a great way to tell your life story That's and provide right, a American. keepsake for friends and family. <laughs> and you don't need to be a famous person or a professional writer to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Get a feel for the work. Develop a core concept. Oh, I'll do it like Tom Brokaw. Oh, oh, wonderful. Uh, more Get a feel for the work. <laughs> Develop a core concept. <laughs> Organize your story. Keep it in interesting. Keep it in cool. <laughs> Which career suits you best, Jamie and Joe? What was your process? Oh, well, that's me. me. Oh, that's, well, that's, 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 that's your life. I feel um, like we're at the Academy Awards. Before we get to process, yeah. we're going to have selected readings oh. or excerpts, if you will. Okay. okay. So we'll start with Joe. Oh gosh. And um, you wrote your book. I did. And I, I, so I wrote it with my wife. With Ann Cipriano. We wrote uh, in the way, well, no, I guess we'll talk about that yeah. after, the way we wrote. Yeah. 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 The way we wrote. <laughs> so I was in the radio. I started in radio when I was uh, 14 years old. <gasps> and, Where? Uh, in Waterbury, Connecticut. Wow. Little 1,000 watt radio station. <laughs> wow. And, um, you know, the big thing in radio at that time in Top 40 was 
my name's Joe Cipriano. Uh, actually, my name is David Joseph Cipriano. Yeah. You would never use that on the radio. No. You know, you, you want to like, use two first names. Yeah, on you want to be Pete Moss. Always two first Jim names. Scott. <laughs> yeah, you know. Jack so, Daniels. Jack Daniels. Oh my God, Jack. Um, in Tom. Buffalo, in Buffalo, we had Sandy Beach. Oh, Sandy Beach is and that's legendary. That's my favorite. WKBW we, in Youngstown. Yes. We had Boots Bell. Your bearded bosom buddy, Boots Bell. Wow. So you had to have a catchy name. Yeah. So I searched and searched and searched. I finally found a name in the obituary uh, <laughs> of our local newspaper. This uh, poor guy named Thomas Collins passed away, and mm-hmm. I thought. Tom Collins. Mm-hmm. That's a That's good a great radio name. name. Jack Daniels. So Tom I became, Collins. Yeah. Thinking so I life. became uh, Tom Collins in That's Waterbury. Great. I also had a job at another radio station in Hartford, Connecticut. Because the signals crossed, mm-hmm. I had to use a different name. <laughs> so I was Dave Donovan. Another kind of cool radio name. <laughs> right, right, right. That's great. So this is uh, from the chapter, Everybody's Making and It he, But it, Me. And he's 14. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> right. By now, I think I'm about... 19. Okay, 18, 19. okay, okay. And I was the music director of WWCO. I received boxes of records every week from record companies with each song promising to be the next big hit. And one day there was a song that landed on my desk that put a lump in my throat. It was actually a country song by Shel Silverstein, and the title summed up my feelings at the time. It was called Everybody's Making It But Me. I tacked it up on my wall as a grim reminder of where my head was. I'd been at WWCO for six years now, since I was 14 years old. So, yeah, I'm 19. I was making $150 a week, and I sent out air checks up and down the East Coast trying to move my career forward, but nothing was happening. Finally, a few weeks later, I got a hit. I got a phone call. Hello, Tom. This is Gordon Peel, program director at WRC Radio in Washington. (laughs) Tom, we like your tape you sent us, but we're looking for DJs that can perform in a personality format with fewer restrictions than top 40 do you have anything that you can send us and i said yeah sure i've got a tape from another station that i work at up here i'll I'll send it right away so i send him my dave donovan tape from wdrc which was more of a freeform personality heavy station one week later i was on the air at wwco when i got another call from washington dc hello tom (laughs) this is gordon peel program director at wrc radio in washington As you know, Tom, we like that tape you sent us and just want to let you know we've narrowed down our search to three people and you're one of them. We're still sorting out things here, but we'd like to have you come down for an interview in a few weeks. I hung up the phone and I was still in a daze when I got a call from one of the secretaries up at WDRC in Hartford. Uh, Dave, I got a message here for you from Gordon Peel in Washington. (laughs) He wants you to call him right back. Now, if this sounds confusing to you, imagine the state that I was in at the moment. I was live on the radio doing my afternoon show. I just found out I had a one in three shot at a job in the number one eight market in the country. And for some reason, they called me again up at WDRC. So I called them right back. Uh, Hey, Gordon, uh, you left a message for me at WDRC in Hartford? Uh, Yes, of course. WDRC. Let's see. (laughs) You must be Dave Donovan, right? Uh, Dave, this is Gordon Peel in Washington, D.C. Uh, Just want to let you know that you're one of three candidates that we're looking at for an opening at WRC. Well, wait a minute. I I said, I I just talked to you about a half hour ago. No, Dave, we haven't talked to you before. (laughs) Well, yeah, you called me here at WWCO where I'm Tom Collins. You're Dave and Tom? (laughs) You're you're both the same person, he asked. Uh, Well, then, whoever you are, it looks like you're two of the three people we're considering for this job. How soon can you get down here for an interview? Right away. So what happened? Who was the third guy? Rick Dees. Ah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. no. Yeah, Never knew luck. who the third guy was. Ooh. Yeah. But I did get the job. Yeah. Cousin Brucey. <laughs> Cousin Brucey. Cousin, yeah. And what name did you go by when you got that job? Well, it's funny. Uh, he's... <laughs> When when they we started talking about the job, um, I, I'm still living with my parents up in Connecticut, and he called me on, you know, we had two phones, one in the kitchen, one in the upstairs sure. hall, and my mom took the call, and she said, it's that Gordon guy, you know. <laughs> so I got on the phone, and we were talking about um, the, the job, and he offered it to me. And he said, uh, we're going to change your name. And I said, that's okay. I, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I've never used Cipriano on the, on the radio before. He goes, no, we like Cipriano. We just want to change it from Dave to Joe because it sounds more ethnic. And I said, all right. Oh, very good. I'll be darned. Joe, so he did. 
Okay. Joey yeah. Cipriano. Joey, Joey Cipriano. Hey, Joey Cipriano. Joe Cipriano. Come on, get over here. Get on Come the radio. On. Get on the radio. So there, are, I've I've heard people call him Dave. Get, there are yeah. there are still people oh. who call him Dave. Few people call me we, Tom and Collins. Right, and yeah. so back at Kiss uh, Kiss FM, yeah, he we used to call him Joe Dave. Jim, Joe Dave Jimba Boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, he just had, answered to a lot of different names. Uh, That's so, right. That's great. What a great story. So Jamie, <laughs> we would love to hear a passage, if you mm. would, oh, from I the Tin Man Diaries. Read a radio passage. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. <laughs> This, uh, this goes back to 1966. Ooh, cool. Okay. One Sunday in high school, my three buddies and I were flopped on the sofa, bored out of our minds. So my friend Randy stole a large Colt 45 malt liquor from his family's fridge, and we all split it. It was the first time I'd drunk my liquor ever, and, and within minutes, I was the drunkest I'd ever been in my life. Alcoholism is heredity, right? So it's, it's I guess, it's all relative. There's no lifeguard in the gene pool. You know, we were high school, high school sophomores, high and wise fools. So I decided to use my talents, or at least exercise my mean-spirited side, to call my neighbor Kathy Marshall. Kathy was president of the New Jersey Beatles fan club. And it was the 60s. It was one of those ultra-modern princess phones that I grabbed. It took forever to dial the number on that thing. And I remember thinking, why did the emergency number have a nine in it? <laughs> hmm. Anyway, here's how the call went. Hello? And my best Brian Epstein. Hello, is this Kathy Marshall of Morristown, New Jersey? <laughs> uh, um, um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yes, it is. It was Kathy. Uh, uh, Kathy, I have some brilliant news for you. Uh, you've been chosen out of all the presidents of Beatles fan clubs across America to be spoken to by one of the Beatles. Oh. We have John Lennon and George Harrison standing by in London to have a chat with you. Who would you like to speak to? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You better ask my dad. He's, he's from Albania. Honestly, I thought she said Alabama. <laughs> so I was ready to speak to a good old boy and tell him I was happier than a cat on a liver wagon to make his acquaintance. But wait, I had to convince him I was Brian Epstein. <laughs> hello uh yes hello mr marshall this is brian epstein i manage a singing group called the beatles beagles no <laughs> no no uh, no yes uh, yes okay then uh, the beagles and your daughter is about to speak to one of them um uh, uh, one of the beagles that is all the way from london this for real uh, yes i assure you for real for real absolutely and it's all for kathy to his daughter it's for you. <laughs> hello? <clears throat> yes, Kathy, hello again. Uh, to which of the Beatles would you like to speak? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, no. John Lennon. John Lennon. Oh, my God. Right, then. Let me just patch him through. You're a horrible, horrible oh. boy. <laughs> That's <It's> so <laughs> poor girl. Hello? <laughs> oh, my God. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, not quite. However they say, I might be his son. Excuse me? <laughs> Never mind. How are you, love? Oh, oh, my God. Listen, love, we've got this new film coming out, you know. It's called Help. It would be fab if you could tell your mates that we called to say hello, and maybe you could all go see the movie. Oh, I will. I will. Oh, my God, I will. Oh, oh, my God. My buddies and I had a huge laugh about this, and by the end of the call, we all had sobered up. The next day, I went to school and took great delight in hearing Kathy tell all her friends about talking with John on the bus. I let her have her moment. At the end of the day, when we got off the school bus, I went into Gable's drugstore to get my usual birch beer and ring ding. Mr. Gable said, Hey, Jamie, how about that gal in your neighborhood yesterday? Kathy Marshall. She got called by one of those beetles. I was stunned, nay, petrified. Uh, uh, how, how did you f uh, find out about that, Mr. Gable? Well, right here in the newspaper, son, front page. <laughs> <laughs> and there it was on the front page of the Morris Daily Record. Local girl gets called from Beetle. Was it too late to scour the city and destroy every newspaper? <laughs> I guess so. So I took my birch beer and my ring ding, and I started to walk home in a daze. Was it a Thursday? I don't know. You know, I was closer to the ocean now. I could jump a tramp steamer. 
How long could I live on a birch beer and ring day, though? <laughs> I knew my dad would know it was me. I knew there'd be a price to pay. Dinner was, was very tense that night. I, I finally broke the silence, as John. I was work today, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably get sued, goddammit. Lose the whole goddamn house to some shaggy-haired son of a bitch from England. <laughs> you young men are grounded for life. For good. Go to your room. <laughs> That was the end of it. I did confront Kathy Marshall on the bus many oh times, and I told her as John. Kathy, you know, that was me, don't you know? I was John. No, sir, Jamie Alcroft. That was John Lennon. I'm the one to talk to him, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. I knew it was. It bloody well wasn't. Ask my dad. Ask my dad. I still have the clipping from the newspaper and she probably does too sure i think about the fact that she's out there somewhere telling her grandchildren about the day she got called by john lennon but was it really john in her heart she'll never really know for sure but i hope she believes that it was life's more fun that way years later ron moranian called me in new york city at 1 a.m said he had a late night talk show and no one was calling in so I called him as John Lennon. <laughs> we chatted up the ruse for quite a bit, and then he got another call. The, gal, the guy sounded a lot like, and said he was, John Lennon. But was it really John? I don't know. Oh, my God. He was really good, and he did have an accomplice. I heard a woman with a high-pitched voice say, Come to bed, John! Come to bed! Get up the phone! In my heart. I'll never really know for sure, will I? <laughs> well, I guess I better go. I'm still grounded. If my dad finds out I sneaked out of the house to get a heart transplant, he'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that That's was awesome. Great, Jamie. That's so good. Do you guys realize both of your stories prominently featured telephones? Telephones. That were plugged into walls. The, the old mm -hmm. yeah, rotary the old, dial. And that is nine, hilarious nine. about 911. <laughs> how in the <laughs> world did they just say like nine? Let's put take forever. Nine in there. But what you guys yeah. need to know if you've never had one is it, it's not just how long it took you to dial the nine all the way to the end. And then it's got to come back. It has to come all the way back. And you're waiting to dial the one one and somebody's bleeding out in the other room. Thank God it was a 999. Yeah, yeah really? Jeez. <laughs> so uh, now that's very funny. So, Jamie, you Thanks. are the ambassador, or one of the ambassadors for One Legacy. I have become, Which is the yes. organization that helps find organs for people. Tell, tell us how it works. Oh, wow. Well, excuse me. Uh, one Legacy is uh, the OPO, which means it's the, it's the local arm of a larger organization. Uh, the larger organization is... Uh, donate life california okay uh, but we have different regions in california that are handled by one legacy one legacy handles la county santa barbara county um, riverside county i think that's it i think that's it mm -hmm. and well what they do is when when they find out they have a donor um it's certainly donor heavy because you don't when you find out you have a recipient you can't call just for an organ you find out you have a donor mm -hmm. you look you call one legacy they I look see. at their registry they see who's most in need mm -hmm. and that's the criteria for it mm -hmm. those who are most in need of the heart get it doesn't have anything to do with your social standing your connections at the hospital none of that stuff it's all most in need and and so one legacy takes care of that and what i do as an ambassador as I go out and I speak to Rotary Clubs and uh, I get uh, proclamations from cities uh, because April is National Donor Month and we want as many proclamations from cities as we can saying that they support uh, Donate Life and One Legacy uh, as the, uh, the arm for doing that. And it's, it's amazing. I went to the meeting and out of the, I would say 120 people there who were signing up to become ambassadors, for one legacy so they could go out and speak about it and they could also with their phone sign up a donor within 90 seconds on their phone um they were some of them donor families and it was the first i had been around donor families and it was very emotional mm, I bet. Yeah. very emotional wow i had done a i'd done a podcast with that fellow in in israel michael lieben Mm -hmm. whose daughter passed away at 15 and she donated her organs or mm. he donated her organs 
And um, I said, you're such a hero, Michael. You're such a hero. And he said, no, I'm not a hero. I'm not a hero. And then when we were on the phone with him, I looked up the meaning of hero. Mm -hmm. And a hero is somebody who does the right thing at the right time. Mm -hmm. So anybody who decides to fill out their donor card is doing the right thing at the right time. Anyone who decides to donate the organs of their deceased loved one are doing the right mm -hmm. thing at the right time. When I was in the hospital, 20 people a day died because the organs they needed weren't available. 20 wow. people a day. I was there for 85 days. Do the math. Wow. I did it once. I forget what it was. It's a lot. It's well, a lot. Well, you can do it on your driver's license in California, right? You have the pink the dot. Donor. Of put course. A pink yeah. dot. You put a pink dot on the driver's license, yeah. but a lot of people don't do that at the DMV. Right. Oh, you have to do it as soon and as you get your card. Just you have because to you're going to forget course. about it. If you decide later, though, this is a way where now you can sign up for it. Well, yeah. now, Scotland just went to opt in so that when you get your driver's license, you're immediately considered a killer of the road. And so you're a donor. Mm. Oh. And if six months down the road, you can opt out of the program. Ah. But for the first six months you have your license, in. you're automatically a wow. donor. Interesting. Because you can save hundreds of lives with your skin tissue. Mm -hmm. You can give sight to people with your corneas. That was the amazing thing about Michael over in Israel is in Israel they have a different policy. The recipients or the donors, I'm sorry, I get it mixed up. The recipients can reach out to the donors. Oh. Like I can't reach out to my donor. Okay. My donor has to have to have contacted me and they didn't. The his family, family. His family did yeah. not. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine it was a motorcycle accident. I'm sure they were grieving. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like someone's dying of some prolonged disease right. and you can right. have time to make that decision. Mm -hmm. But he had already filled out his donor card and he was my size. They, they do it by size. He was 5'11", 180 pounds. And they said, okay. This looks like it's a good fit. Have you met any yeah. other organ recipients? Oh, yes. Many, many. Yeah. And and some of them, 28 years ago, I got my organs or, you know, yeah. seven years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago. It's great. It used to be when you got a, a an organ, it, you, you know, you maybe live for three or four more years. Right. Mm -hmm. And now it's, it's yeah. it, the science is just absolutely precision and Miraculous. So even though the family didn't reach out to you, do you know who the donor was? No. You, and no information at no, all? No, I I call him Brian. Hmm. I spell it with a Y. Mm -hmm. Just because a little different. Yeah. Makes him a little uh, yeah. special. Yeah. And I thank him every morning. Uh -huh. and, um, and, and but meeting these donor families was very cathartic for me. Because and, and, and talking to Michael, and he said that, you know, he's, he's a Jew, and uh, he said that it was thrilling to him that a Palestinian boy got one of his daughter's organs. That's awesome. And that is awesome. Yeah. That is that is what we're talking about. That's mm -hmm. humanity. Yeah, yeah. And 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 when I talk about this, people get a little antsy because like you said before, you have to wait for somebody to die in order for you to live. Mm -hmm. Well, I consider Brian uh, a hero yeah. because he donated, and I consider him a hero because he has a legacy that lives on through me mm -hmm. and lives on through my family. So that when you pass along, you know, everybody wants to leave something behind when they go. Oh, I want to be remembered. I want to leave something important. Be no, I want to do something really important with my life. I want to make a difference. And that's how you can make a difference. That's for you sure. You just put on that little pink spot. And, and believe me, donorship is a very passive procedure. Mm -hmm. you're really not going to know what's happening. Right, exactly. You know? <laughs> but are you going to tell the part it's where true. you would instruct people who are on their way to visit you not to drive very safely? Oh, I, oh no, I didn't. I said, I said, when people say, we want to come up and visit you, I said, okay, you on a motorcycle? I said, yeah. I said, okay, don't wear a helmet. Yeah, drive really right. fast. And I don't need a brain. You drive it, so. yeah. I said, the only people I'll accept as visitors are people who drove really, really fast to get here. <laughs> and who are 5'11 and, and 180 pounds. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's marvelous when you learn more and more about it and, and, and how they do it and the lives they've saved and... The people they've touched. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! And, and me, I, I wouldn't be here. Thanks, mm -hmm. Brian. Thanks, yeah, thanks, thanks Brian. Brian. With a Y. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to turn a corner towards what's Twitter trending. Ah. And today, it was a hashtag game that was trending, and it was called hashtag Techie Bands. Woohoo! So mm. I selected this one ah. from uh, Robin with a Y. 
Her Twitter nice. name is Robin. <laughs> With a I think she knows Brian. I think she knows. <laughs> Could be. I didn't know that was coming That's up. That's good. No. Yeah. There are no accidents. But, I mean, same no parents accidents. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So her <laughs> hashtag techie band is Maroon 5G. Maroon 5G. Uh, who wants to read the next one? From David E. I'll read David it. David E. I'll read it. Do you guys have it? All right, it? there we go. David E. The Spice URLs. The spice Earls. <laughs> spice Earls. My, yeah. Spice Earls. That's good. And then we have spice from Earls. Gertrin. 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 Go ahead, uh, Joe. Ah, from Techie Bands, uh, the USBGs. <laughs> there we go. USBGs. <laughs> And I picked that because Jamie and Mac used to always do the, the Bee Gees. In oh, they the, did. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Not on stage. Just, uh, oh, just, just, just saying in out. private. Yeah, because you know, the Bee Gees always ask so nicely. In our personal yeah. lives. Yeah. So, Absolutely. And on Facebook feed time, I thought this would this would spark an, a, a nice, uh, hearty conversation. This mm-hmm. is from Jared Cardwell. Do not know how I know him or why we are Facebook friends. But he writes, I'm one of the few people on earth to have ever been inside the psycho house, thanks to my friend David. Was it you, Joe? It wasn't I. Okay. No. What is a unique showbiz experience you've had? Now, the reason we're super zoomed in on this was the first response was pretty uh, crusty oh. and off color. So we <laughs> were not going to. Yeah, a crass. Was that the one from Stephen Lockhart? Just a little. Yeah. A yeah, little yeah. crass. Okay. You, can, you can clean it up by, you know. Is it the one with Wolfman Jack? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, no, uh, no. This one, go ahead and read the one from Wolf. All right. Stephen Lockhart said, I got high with Wolfman Jack in the studio as he did his show. Thanks to my friend, Sean Hammond. Everyone's thanking their friends for these bizarre <laughs> for showbiz, these, yeah. showbiz adjacent experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael McGruther wrote, I got stoned with Joaquin Phoenix and the director of Ladder 49 on the set of that movie in some seedy part of Baltimore. Oh, isn't then you, that redundant? A seedy part of Baltimore? No, how unfair of you. James. <laughs> James Alcroft. And Charlie McBride says, I was on a call with Pamela Anderson just after she discovered the video had been stolen. Oh. And I wanted to add mine. Yeah. Donny Osmond uh, ate fruit off my plate backstage at the Grammys. It's... And it's, he knew it was your plate? Oh, yeah. Oh, he is. Oh, he knew. He was cad. being fun. He's a cat. Yeah. He was being yeah. fun. I love Donny Osmond. We love Donny, yeah. Are, are we sure it was really Pamela Anderson that that guy was on That's a call with? It could have been me. <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> Might have been Jamie. Oh! Right. It could have been Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know. Oh, my God. I just got a So phone now, call. like, we, the reason that a post like that from a friend of mine in, in Facebook land would have so many actual stories is because we live in los angeles so these kinds we of exp- and also we a lot of our friends are in show business they are so i don't even know why i picked the donny osmond story yeah there's <laughs> billions of stories well, oh yeah you have a lot it was just that he's adorable yeah, yeah. and yeah. uh totally adorbs so yeah. joe pick one okay one yeah that's how a- do you pick one um i try tough. to go for a big name uh, That's tough. Frank Sinatra. Right. Sent, Never heard of him. <laughs> sent in uh, to where we were having a birthday party for my wife, uh, bottle after bottle of uh, champagne um, so that we could celebrate her birthday. <gasps> and what happened- Oh, John well, Lloyd, famous tennis oh, player. John, hey, how are you? He's calling. Let's uh, put him on air. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. He's got an accent. Yeah. Well- um, what happened don't we was, all. That's how you won't know it's really Jamie. It was don't, my wife's. We all. It was my wife's birthday. Uh, I had uh, invited a bunch of friends. We went to um, oh gosh, uh, Spago, not Spago. The wa- the one up in Malibu. I can't even remember what it's called. Peppy's now. Pizza. <laughs> it was at Wolfgang no. Puck. Oh, and we were, we were there and did not know that outside our little private area was Frank Sinatra. <gasps> uh, and he heard all the ruckus and and mm-hmm. all of that. And I had blown up this huge uh, picture. My wife's um, uh, from from kindergarten, and put it on an easel, and everybody was signing their names. Happy birthday, Anne! And da la 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 la. And my nephew took it and went out to Frank Sinatra and Stop said, "Stop it!" Mr. As the waiters were going, "No!" And, Sin- and said, "Mr. Sinatra, my uh, aunt is having a birthday. Would you oh sign it?" And we still have it, dearest Anne. Happy birthday, Frank Sinatra. What a mensch. And when they came back in. Holding it like this, or two nephews, mm-hmm. all of us, or forty of us, went nuts. And Sinatra, oh, like heard Simba, that. yeah. <laughs> Behold, Sinatra heard you. Two minutes Go later, Sin- the door opens, and Frank Sinatra oh, walks in and says, stop. "Where's Anne? Where is oh, Anne? Where's the birthday girl?" And gosh. Anne's like, "Yeah, here." 
He came in with a, a glass of red wine. He had her sip from the wine, him. He kissed her. He talked to nice. everyone. He left. We all applauded. Everybody was nuts. And then 10 minutes later, waiters were coming in with trays of poured champagne. And I got one of the waiters. I said, I didn't order any champagne. He said, no, it's from Mr. Sinatra. And he said, there's more where that came from. And happy birthday. Oh, cool. my yeah. God. What a great That's birthday. the craziest show business Jason story I've ever heard. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Can I read from my book instead? Yes. <laughs> Donny Osmond ate off my plate. <laughs> oh, I never heard that before. <laughs> That's a great story. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. You should elaborate on that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to go back. Here we go. To 19, again. By the way, you know this is going to be good. 1960. He's going way back. Yeah. Uh oh, he's going to do all the voices. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do any voices here. Um, but. I was acting in in high school. I, I was Birdie and Bye Bye Birdie my sophomore year. I was the mayor's wife. Pre- oh, you fainted when I went. Yeah. Oh, I made the well. I'm. I, I was Conrad. The Birdie. mayor's oh. wife is in, an in influencer. My high school play. Nineteen. You were Conrad Birdie. Yeah. Me too. The mayor's Me too. wife. Can I just say? Oh, she, one she, last she, kiss. She's an influencer. Agreement. One last kiss. She's, no, she she's wants not to just talk a bit part. She's wife. an influencer because yeah. when she faints, the mayor's wife. Yeah. Everyone starts fainting. That's Pretty right. soon, the whole she, town she, is oh, unconscious. She's an influencer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the gazebo. She fainted on the stairs of the gazebo. <laughs> the gazebo. <laughs> the that's right. Gazebo. That's right. Oh, well, that so. And then the the next year, so we've got that in common. I played Emile de Beck in South Pacific. I did not. Oh. And some enchanted evening. Wow. You know, that That's kind of impressive, thing. yeah. And um, my best friend uh, at the time went to another high school. And uh, he, we became best friends when we were sophomores in high school. And then junior year and senior year, he spent at another high school. His parents moved to Bernersville. And he was dating this young lady. And we were double dating quite a bit. And this young lady had played Daisy May in Little Abner. Her sophomore year, mm-hmm, while I was doing. Mm-hmm. and then she had played uh, Nellie Forbish, so we knew all the lines and all the songs from South Pacific, and we just had the greatest time singing them in the car. And Bruce was kind of my buddy was just, I was having a better time with his date he, than, yeah, than he was. Right. Yeah. And and then we went to Joe <laughs> King's Rat Skeller at Seventeenth and Third, and drank a lot of pitchers of beer and ate French fries, and and um, <laughs> and then. Uh, his date got sick, and and she said, "Oh, Jamie, Jamie," because Bruce was somewhere I don't know, and I was there, so I helped her into the bathroom and so forth, and did that whole, you know, your friend's sick. Thing, yeah, wow. Which we all probably went through at one time, mm-hmm. holding the forehead and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And then we went back, and then he he started dating her quite quite frequently, and. And uh, we would always just have a great time together because we were both theater people. And Bruce was an athlete, he was a football player, and just didn't quite connect on, on that level. And years later, I was in the Santa Monica Mall, and I saw her standing on a balcony across the way. And I said uh, to Sarah, I said, oh, my God, there's Meryl. And Meryl. Sarah said, oh, will you go over and talk to her, honey? Uh-huh. She's your friend. And I walked up to her and I said, Meryl Streep, oh my God. what the hell have you been doing since high school? <laughs> Best line. Best line. What did she say? <laughs> she said, don't give me that shit, Jamie. I see you on TV every night. Oh, God. Because our series was on the air. It was in the 80s. Night, and Comedy Break was on the air. That's, that's, so, that's such a, a great story. story. That was so great. I think we have and, to close with that. And yeah. it was so great that, you know, I knew her then. Yeah. And she remembered me. You taught her and, all those accents. And I taught her. I did. I did, actually. <laughs> if it weren't that's for another you. thing we used to do is we used to talk gibberish to each other. That, you know, what do you use? The Russian gibberish. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do this with my kids in the mall. Oh, God. That was, they, they hated it. Meryl. They hated I would it. love for nice you both to hold up your books oh. in closing. Mm. In Holding up our books in closing. Yeah. The Dancing Tin Man. La, 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 the Dancing la, la. Tin Man. Where can we get that, Jamie? On Amazon.com. Living on Air. Amazon.com. Maybe we Adventures could maybe get your friend where, where, where Meryl get to that? write you a review. Where can we get that? Uh, Amazon.com. Uh, the audiobooks at audible.com or Amazon. 
enjoy. We are Things I Found Online, and next week we'll have soap opera legend Andrea Evans. <gasps> See you then. Bye-bye. Bye now.